r slash ask reddit now that the 2010s decade is ending which trends are the most regrettable this isn't a prank it's a social experiment wherein we're going to see if people get mad when we walk up to them and punch them as hard as we can i hadn't watched reality tv for years and took a job at a university where the tv had to be on at all times and students would come in to watch they switch on MTV and it's a half hour prank show where they run up to people on the street and spoil the end of movies and shows that just came out. Part of my job unofficially became having everything I planned to watch next weekend ruined for me. Duck you. MTV. Just all the family YouTube channels in general. I was astounded when I went over to a friend's house and her kid was watching one of these. They are so terrible. My niece is obsessed with them and they're just marketing ploys to sell toys to kids. The whole episode was just look at this toy, and I have this toy, it's sick. Being a dong to people on camera for likes from strangers. That simply continued from the zeros. Happy slapping was a real annoyance. That weird moustache trend that was popular around 2013. You know when teenagers would have moustaches on the phone cases, as jewelry and whatnot. OMG yes the moustache finger tattoos WTH. Oh man I bet people are regretting those. Clickbait. I think you mean. These photos of the top 10 worst clickbait articles will shock you. That one time we had a clown problem. Rebooting everything for the sake of nostalgia instead of coming up with new ideas. It's like post postmodernism. Repostmodernism. Connie 2012. Oh my god that was this decade. Crappy video games that is only there so you can pay to play. This isn't going to stop until people stop paying for it. Addiction is real. Seemingly endless stream of movie remakes and sequels. Most poor. Done mostly to make a quick easy buck off the name of the previous movie. And sadly most show a lack of creativity and original thinking. I took some film studies classes and one of my profs who was an animator and worked for Disney, Nirvana, etc said that sequels were always a thing purely for numbers, I believe she said that sequels were guaranteed to make something like 30-40% whatever the original title did, no matter how bad they were, because people trust the original was good, so some companies she worked for would put the cheaper BC team on direct to, TV sequels that didn't need much design concept work or polish while the rest of the studio ramped up for the next original story as a way to maintain income over the years between original releases. Not sure which companies, might be neither listed, but I got the impression it was an industry trend. These are all kids movies, mind you, and kids will watch anything so it might be related to that. Not saying it's a good thing for the properties, just that there is a reason it could be necessary, unless you're an enormous conglomerate with bottomless pools of money destroying your own properties for short term profit. Social media making everyone feel like they need to be heard, it's one of the main reasons why stuff like anti-vaxxers, MLMs, Nazis, cancel culture, flat earthers, etc. exists. Misinformation is just spread like a disease within echo chambers like that. Social media has made me feel like everyone needs to shut the duck up. I always say the internet is great because it gave everyone a voice, but I also say the internet sucks because it gave everyone a voice. Anti-vaxxers. I find it really encouraging how many people now support and understand the science better as a result. Yes, anti-vaxxers found each other and other gullible people to join them with the ability to advertise their crazy talking bits on social media. But you see a lot more people who know and understand the basics of vaccines as a result as well. Pushing back on them, it's also a testament to the efficacy of vaccines that just a generation or two later that the diseases have been so removed from public memory that idiots can attack their necessity. Midget Spinners Highly overdrawn lips and eyebrows like, I can see where your real lip ended a half inch back. The fake ass swollen lips also, I don't know why anyone thinks this makes them look better looking like plastic. Oh god, I can't ducking stand the permanent duck face look, they look like they got their lips stuck inside a vacuum cleaner, or they had an allergic reaction to an egg they were sucking on or something. Don't I look hot? No. Duck no. You look like someone crossed your DNA with a lamprey. Facebook turning from a fun place to connect with friends to an anti-democracy data ghetto. 
An anti-democracy data ghetto is probably the most amazing and accurate way to describe Facebook. The rise of irresponsible journalism. The drop in civility. The drop in responsible use of social media. Millennials are killing the X industry, often while completely missing that most of the millennials they're complaining about are years too young to be millennials, and that millennials aren't a single hive mind where everyone thinks the same. I always found that statement weirdly hypocritical. I thought we lived in a capitalist system so shouldn't it be X industry fails to compete and dies by the hand of the free market? Not when the older generation owns it. If they fail, it's a malicious conspiracy. If youngsters fail, it's because they just didn't compete hard enough. The death of legitimate journalism. Replacing in with sound bites, partisan hacks, fake news and networks in such a rush to report anything that they don't bother to fact check. None. Let's just pretend some of them never happened. This is a movement I can get behind. Microtransactions in gaming has been unfortunate. I have a feeling a lot of people who got you just fat transfer procedures to look like a Kardashian are going to regret them in the coming decade. How meme culture turned into a contest to produce the coolest and funniest memes. Memes are also chewed up and spat out at ludicrous speeds rather than left to naturally die. And here I am still leaking mudkips. Wearing mental illness like a badge of honor. I am fully on board with acknowledging mental illnesses and getting people proper treatment so their lives can be improved. We should be able to talk about our problems and find solutions to them. However, my problem lies with the people who just pick and choose which mental illnesses to self-diagnose themselves with and then they become the biggest parts of their personalities. Case in point, I saw a post on Twitter because one of my friends liked it. The person's bio reads something like, ADHD, PTSD, bipolar, manic depressive, Asperger's, possibly sociopath. That is someone I never want to interact with, at all. Also people who self-diagnose or say they are bipolar when they in fact have mood swings. Bipolar disorder is a serious DSM-5 diagnosis that more often than not requires medication. It's the same as people who put on their dating profiles I have a lot of trauma or something. That is a lot to lead with. Oof, I was friends with one of these traumatized types. When you hear, I've been through a lot of trauma in my life, from somebody you just met. Be prepared for a one-sided friendship that revolves entirely around listening to the other person's horrible life. Don't even try to talk about your problems or they will start the struggle olympics and prove how their trauma is worse than your problem. Gender reveal parties. Not the normal quiet events with family but the driving need to get more and more extreme with every passing year. I've seen parks ruined, beaches littered and all for something as basic as the gender of your unborn child. Spreading blue glitter everywhere doesn't somehow make the child more special than just saying it's going to be a boy. They're already special. They're your child. It's basically become a competition. There was one that accidentally started a wildfire because of some type of explosive. Everyone is trying to one up the previous one while also trying to be more creative in an attempt to go viral. Social media influencers. Making tons of money and reaching fame by becoming a brand ambassador for bogus skin products never really made sense to me. Modeling is a profession of its own. But not everyone can or should do it. Instagram has made us believe that many of these influencers have perfect lives. And the inadequacy people feel when scrolling through their feed is extremely unhealthy for society. Becoming an influencer should never have been what social media was for. Connecting with friends has now turned into admiring strangers from afar. Leading many of us to feel lonelier than ever. Wealth worship. The Kardashians are an obvious example with Kyla Jenner's billionaire status. Also, high surveillance, Amazon's Echo and the like being bought and placed in homes, willingly. The being alive and doing taxes challenge. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price. Bruh.